Okay, we're ready to move on to turn number three. And I looked again, and I found out I do, in fact, have all of Alyssa's power cards out. For some reason, I thought I was missing one, but I'm not. They're all here and accounted for. So, in the last turn, Alyssa took two points of damage from the Blazing Skeleton, bringing us down to four. We're still up in standing, so we do not need to use a Healing Surge. So now we either we uh, move and then move, we move attack or attack and move. We have to decide what we're going to do. Now the Blazing Skeleton has two hit points of damage, so we have to decide if we want to try to do like one automatic damage that's guaranteed to hit. We can do that two ways. We can use the we can use our careful attack or we can use our item or we can gamble and we can use hit and run which will do two damage which if successful will kill the blazing skeleton which i would really like i still think it's a little too early to start looking at our more our higher end powers so place yeah i, I think it's too early for these and certainly if that can do three damage, we probably want to save that for something even stronger than the Blazing Skeleton. And this one says, use this power when an adjacent monster hits you, the attack misses, instead place that monster. I just, that doesn't seem very useful to me. I think, so I'm just, uh, I'm thinking about what I want to do. Um, it's still pretty early in the game. I think I'll go ahead and gamble. I'll go for the uh, the hit and run, because if it hits, we're going to take down the Blazing Skeleton. And if it misses, I'm going to really wish I had done one of these guaranteed hits. So we have to be adjacent to the Blazing Skeleton, so we're, the first thing we're going to have to do is move, and then we're going to attack. Now, with uh, Alyssa's scout ability, I don't have to worry about you know, being on an unexplored edge. So I can just move up to this tile, place her so that she's, uh, well, place her so that she's adjacent to the blazing skeleton. And now we're going to do our attack roll. <clears throat> and I've watched a lot of people play this game on YouTube and I seem to have the same luck as them, which is when I'm rolling for traps, attacks and monsters, I roll high. And when I'm rolling for myself, I roll low. This roll is for myself. And that's that looks good. That's an 18. That's yeah, that's great. So luck we got lucky. We're we our gamble paid off. We uh we don't even need the plus six, but when we add in the plus six, it's a twenty-four. And then we have some additional stuff here, whether we hit or not, we can place our hero anywhere on any square on the tile, so if we needed to move somewhere else on the tile, we could, um, regardless of the fact that we uh, hit or missed, but luckily we hit. So the Blazing Skeleton goes down, so we'll place him in the pile of monsters, take his card, and we turn it sideways, and it just becomes experience. So this is not a discard pile, this is an experience pile. These will be our discard piles. Uh, when we get to the point of using experience, I'll talk a little bit about that, but for now we're just accumulating experience. So that's great. Now we can take a treasure card. So I'm going to put Y here indicating that I can. Now I don't have to. Remember, we have this ring of regeneration, and it says, you know, whenever we would draw a treasure card, we can choose instead to gain a hit point. And I kind of like that idea because treasure is a bit of a gamble because a lot of times you draw treasure that you can't use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to indicate that yes, I could take a treasure, but instead I'm going to take the plus one. And then up here on my sheet, I'm going to mark five and you know, cause I got that hit point increase. And again, Alyssa can explore from anywhere. So we're going to say, yes, we are exploring. And remember, after I killed the, or rather, after I played the hit and run, 
I have the ability to also move her anywhere on this tile. Not that it's necessary, but just because we can, we'll go ahead and move her up here to the unexplored edge. But either way, we would still be able to grab a tile. So grab a tile, this is another white one. So, dun dun dun. The sun tracker moves forward. So this is not great, because now we only have one more white tile that we can draw and still be safe. And if we draw another one after that, Strahd wakes up, and it gets really difficult when Strahd wakes up. So we drew a white tile, and we're gonna place a monster. Just knock off the blazing skeleton. So we're drawing a monster, and we get a gargoyle. So uh, let's take a look at this really quick. So it's got a plus eight, does damage whether it hits or not. That's so dumb. <laughs> 16 AC, which is quite high. All right, we'll, uh, we'll deal with this when we get to it. I guess if there's anything good about the gargoyle, it's that if you can get far enough away from it, it doesn't do anything. Most monsters will pursue you no matter how far away from them you are, but if you can get a sufficient distance away from the gargoyle, it uh, will no longer pursue you. So maybe we'll keep that in mind as one of our possible strategies. So we'll grab a gargoyle. And we'll place it on the bone pile. So we will not have an encounter. There is no villain. And we have a, let's just say Gar. So now the gargoyle will activate. If the gargoyle is within one tile, and it is, it moves to the closest hero's tile and attacks each hero on the tile with a whirlwind of claws. So the rules say when, you move, when a monster moves from one tile to another, it follows the bone piles. So that makes me kind of regret having moved Alyssa from this spot. In fact, that, that's something I try to keep in mind when I move her around. I try to keep her adjacent to the bone pile so that in a situation like this, on the start of the next turn, I'm adjacent and I can just instantly, you know, stab for one point. But I didn't do that. So we're going to move the gargoyle down, put it on the bone pile. In the original rules, uh, you could it, it didn't specify that, so you could bring the... I could have brought the gargoyle down and placed him anywhere, but they updated the rules to say that the monsters move from one bone pile to another. If the bone pile's already occupied, then I could put him anywhere I want, but the bone pile's not occupied. Okay, so it's going to attack with its Whirlwind of Claws. It's going to get a plus 8. So it needs to roll really low in order to miss us. And if it hits us, it, it's going to do 2 damage and slow us down. So, not a good attack. So get the dice rolled up and let's hope we roll low this time. 13 is not low. It's low enough to miss our armor class, but by the time you add in the 8, it's not. It's a 21. So we're going to take 2 damage, and we're slowed until the end of our hero phase the next turn. So I'll put that there, and then come up here and mark. We went from 5 to 3 hit points, so we're not looking too good. And that will be the end of turn 3.